Hi, uh, folks. Uh, my name is Pablo. I'm the Chief Technology Officer at uh, Vox Media. Uh, Vox Media um, is a, a digital media company based in the U.S. in cyberspace. Um, we operate um, a bunch of brands like uh, SB Nation, uh, which covers sports topics, uh, Diverge, which is enthusiastic and thoughtful about technology and culture. Um, we have Polygon, which explores video games and video game life and the culture aspects of that. We have Eater, uh, which really is enthusiastic and, and thoughtful about dining and restaurants and you know, uh, quality of life issues there. And of course, we have Vox, uh, which seeks to give context to world events in the news. Um, really quickly, as CTO at Vox Media, my mission is to help the company make wise technology decisions. You know, what should we build? What should we buy? Uh, what should we invest in next? Um, ensure the health and productivity of our teams and of the systems that we build. And then, uh, for, you know, related to this talk, um, a real focus on fostering a culture of creativity and innovation. Now, before I uh, begin, I want to... Uh, uh, give my thanks to Mariano and his team for inviting me here. As you mentioned, uh, folks from Vox Media participated in this event in the past, and every time they have come back, uh, just practically vibrating uh, with new ideas and energy. Um, so it's really amazing. And, and when it comes to uh, building and fostering cultures of innovation and creativity, I really think that sharing and collaboration is the is is the fuel um, for that. And so uh, events like Media Party are just so crucial. Um, and also on a personal note, I, uh, I happened to get my start as my career started here in Buenos Aires. Uh, my career as a programmer, um, the first code I ever wrote as a professional was back in 2001 on a tiny little office, uh, you know, on Calle Luis Borges and in Palermo. So it's, I'm pretty happy and honored to be back um, in this amazing, amazing city. Okay. So I'm here to talk about um, innovation, in innovation in journalism. And um, I think it's pretty clear why. Um, everyone knows that innovation is important. It's also pretty exciting. Um, if you don't, if the feeling is if you don't innovate, you're going to fall behind. Uh, that the media landscape changes so fast and consumer habits evolve so quickly um, that if you're, you're not doing things like VR, uh, if you're not uh, into uh, augmented reality, if you're not publishing through Snapchat, if you don't eventually pivot to video, uh, you're going to uh, you know, lose your way, uh, become a media dinosaur, or worse, be labeled as a legacy media company. Um, and it's really true. Uh, innovation is so very important. One of the things that definitely distinguishes the digital area, uh, digital era of media is the relentless pace of change, and therefore, the relentless need to keep up with it. So media organizations absolutely must cultivate a culture of innovation, and they must uh, retain the ability to embrace and capitalize on new technologies and consumer habits and trends, you know, to take advantage of some of the amazing things we saw in the, in the past presentation that Google is offering. Um, but really, what is a culture of innovation and how do you cultivate it? Well, I'm going to talk uh, about a few things uh, that we've learned at Vox Media and um, some of the things that we're doing. So it was my intention originally with this talk to, uh, you know, explore this topic through the lens of a, an amazing story that we published on SP Nation called 1777-6 that was made, um, created by John Boys. Um, it's just an amazing uh, piece of storytelling, you know, whose like subject is, was supposed to be the uh, future of American football, but it's really something beyond that. And I wanted to take a look at this story um, because one is just simply amazing creative work, you know, that, that manages to blend all sorts of interesting storytelling elements um, like narration and, and compelling visuals and animation, um, video, it has character development, it was published as like a 15 part series, you're just waiting for the next installment. It really represents like some of the amazing things that you can do uh, with the web um, and a browser as a, as a medium, but also just what can, what's a great product of a, of a, of a creative culture. Um, but also the elements of production that went into the story are pretty interesting. There was conceived by John Boyes, who's, you know, I don't know, the guy's like, he's an amazing genius. Um, but also, um, it, the production was handled by both John Boyes and uh, what we call an editorial engineer, which is like an embedded engineer that works with the storytellers um, and adds um, their own uh, voice and perspective and creative twist to the stories. And it used 
um, a system to, the system we use to produce the story is called editorial apps, which I will get into a little bit later, um, but is a like kind of um, framework we've designed at Vice Media to really help our storytellers be expressive. But I only have 20 minutes or so. It's, I really can't too dive too much into the story, but if you check it out later on, I think you'll find it worthwhile because while it's supposed to be about the future of American football world, it really is, is an amazingly moving science fiction story about space probes flying through the galaxy, and it will make you cry for the future of the world if we don't deal with global warming, which is kind of amazing for a sports story, um, but really represents one of the things we try to do at SB Nation and, and at Vox Media in general. Um, we've been doing this kind of stuff for a while um, because what we really do believe is that, um, you know, one part of our soul uh, as a company is that, you know, digi media, digital media enables storytelling uh, to not be constrained um, by the medium, um, but by uh, only by what we can imagine. You know, in the past, uh, media companies really were constrained by by what you could do with paper, what you could put out with paper, what you could. Uh, put through a television box or through a radio set. Um, but nowadays, like really, um, you're constrained only by what you can imagine, what your culture enables, um, and also by what you know, technologists you know, deliver to us year after year in terms of amazing innovations. So um, you really are constrained by um, just the limits of your imagination. So, But there's another aspect that, you know, I guess that's not entirely true because um, we are also constrained by the realities of running a business. So the first point I'd like to make about cultivating a culture of innovation is this. And that is, you know, don't just be obsessed uh, with innovation uh, in and of itself. You know, you should be obsessed with the basics. Um, you know, if you want to cultivate a culture of innovation and creativity, cultivate a culture of the basics. And, you know, what I mean by that is that no organization can survive by only creating you know, snowfalls or 15-part science fiction stories about the future of football. Instead, you know, organizations must be able to, you know, for business reasons and for cultural reasons, do bread and butter and quote-unquote non-innovative storytelling really, really well. And doing important part of the basics means you know, working on things like workflow tools. And I'm talking about content management systems and things like that. At Vox Media, we are obsessed with providing efficient tools for our hardworking teams, not only uh, you know, because um, you know, we want to have an efficient way of working, but we really do think it, cult it ultimately contributes to a, uh, cultivation of I mean, a culture of creativity. Um, if you think about it, like the amount of energy that evaporates in your organization due to miserable workflows, it's just staggering. Um, I really, uh, we really have found that the thing that will destroy um, and really limit the creative energy and positive feeling and imaginative atmosphere of organization is hassle. Um, if, fo if folks are, uh, you know, if folks are uh, bogged down by uh, miserable workflows um, or if it's tedious for that, them to get their day-to-day -day jobs, hour-to-hour -hour jobs done, um, they won't have uh, the energy, desire, um, or initiative to be imaginative or creative. Um, nothing will kill creativity um, in your organization more than hassle. This applies both to storytelling, it applies to business operations, and it applies particularly to um, engineering. I will harp over and over again if you ever talk to me on what a terrible thing hassle is um, because you know, it, I think it really does destroy uh, creativity. So we work very hard on workflow tools um, and systems and processes at our teams to eliminate hassle and to really allow people to work with the minimum of frustration. And what I recommend to media organizations who want to cultivate a culture of innovation and creativity is to pay attention to workflow. Um, you know, pay attention to the, the, the basics of, of, of output of your day-to-day uh, your, your -day work so that your, your creative folks and storytellers can radiate their imaginations and rather than vent their frustrations. Now, this doesn't always mean like building an, your own custom CMS, it just means paying attention uh, and trying to do uh, little things to improve day-to-day uh, -day life and spending the time um, and embracing opportunities to do that. The second point I want to make about uh, cultivating a culture of innovation and creativity is this, and that is structure and process are not just constraints, they can foster creativity. Uh, simply put, uh, teams can be paralyzed by choice, and I really think that uh, Creativity comes from pushing boundaries um, if you put those boundaries in place. In Vox Media, we have learned this lesson, uh, a hard lesson over the years. Um, in the very beginning, uh, we had a, uh, 
you know, and for many years we had an emphasis um, in building our tools on flexibility, on maximum flexibility. You know, we had this idea where, you know, people could start off with a blank page and they could customize everything they needed to do. They could get in an HTML, whatever, add a zillion components, make it, um, uh, make it do whatever they wanted. You know, because we started out from a blogging world and we knew that uh, in the world of digital media, one of the things that's most amazing is like the, uh, the multimedia aspect, how, you know, when you're trying to express and tell a story, you don't just use the written word, you can use the browser as a canvas, but there really is a cost to that approach. Um, and that cost is represented not only as hassle um, when the systems break down or, 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 or work imperfectly, but also uh, a, a thing called blank page paralysis where you're just presented with too much choice and you have no guides. Um, and then on the engineering and product side, you know, there's a significant transformation in integration costs and not only maintenance costs uh, when there's a lack of structure. So to tackle this, uh, we're, we, we have like, a, I'm gonna describe the approach that we're using um, at Vox Media, um, we basically are trying to provide our teams um, not with a, a free form, anything goes uh, kind of experience, but give them three uh, modes of story production that they can use uh, depending on, on their ambitions and energy. Um, the one on the left here, and this is our workhorse, is a, a, a system that ha we have a code name called Anthem. Um, it's basically uh, well, you know, I think it's a pretty amazing uh, story editor experience, but it's a very guided experience. It's one that has, uh, you know, features uh, um, that are, are very thoughtfully uh, in place that were uh, put together after user research that, like, um, and where evaluation has told us that they really do contribute to the efficiency of doing the work and allows for just enough flexibility for, for folks to do what they want. Um, it has, you know, all the bells and whistles that you would imagine with a modern story editor. Um, in terms of like uh, collaborative editing, um, you know, being able to look at different revisions and do diffs and stuff like that. So I'm sure that everyone here has some tool like it, um, so there's nothing really innovative per se, but what was innovative for us uh, about um, Anthem was this decision to create a guided, uh, a very guided workflow for our teams um, so that we could, you know, uh, more easily lock down um, their experience and therefore uh, generate content that was much more structured and give our teams uh, boundaries uh, to guide them um, and not distract them um, and give them something uh, to uh, push up against, you know, because um, one of the things that, um, you, that we have discovered, and I think you will find too, is that you don't have to worry about boundaries being a constraint to creativity. Users will always push up against boundaries. And in fact, pushing up against boundaries um, will give you fantastic signals uh, how to improve your tools and make them better. And when people run up against boundaries, that's when they get creative about what they can, you know, do beyond. They can push the envelope. And that's like a form of creativity that's very, very interesting and useful for, uh, for teams. So give people guides, give people boundaries, allow them to break things. The second mode of storytelling that uh, we provide for our teams is something we call editorial apps. This is a much less structured environment, um, but one that is still uh, pretty tightly coupled with our, uh, um, with our other story productions. And um, this is a uh, framework and development kit that allows uh, storytellers you know, uh, on their own or in collaboration with designers and engineers to really be expressive and push um, their ideas beyond just what you can produce in a regular storytelling uh, or story page on, on the web. Um, it's kind of, uh, when, we, when we first uh, um, developed this tool, uh, we, you know, it really was a blank canvas where anything went or anything goes, but what we found over time, once again, was that without guide rails, um, it became um, confusing and hard for people to work with and actually stifled their work. So we, over time, we've added um, guides to the system, um, frameworks for incorporating design elements, we're incorporating advertising and you know useful hooks into our content API so that they, they can bring in and mash up content. The uh, 1776 story that I mentioned earlier was developed using this editorial apps rig, and it really enabled that story to be very creative and expressive, and allowed participation from um, you know an engineer as well as a storyteller, um, and and allowed it to be as imaginative. Um, and as whimsical as it needed to be to tell the story and made it a big part of its success. Um, but, you know, it was still uh, produced within the bounds of a system um, and, and, you know, didn't drift off into space. 
The third mode of storytelling um, production that we are working on is called uh, API and uh, structured data-driven apps. This is an approach to story production um, that really is about integration and uh, mashing up of content. The idea is to uh, provide a robust and easy to work with set of APIs um, and a framework for development and deployment to our teams uh, that allows them to develop applications and also workflows of various shapes and sizes, uh, be that you know, browser-based apps or um, mobile apps or experiences that leverage structured content and data um, so that they can integrate those things easily with uh, other systems and ecosystems. Uh, you know, hearing all the fantastic uh, stuff that's coming out of the, you know, of, um, you know, Google, Google News um, projects and initiatives, you really um, come to understand that um, nowadays uh, to, there is uh, so much possibility that comes from integrating with other systems, both pulling um, the output from, um, from tools or uh, putting your content and data in, into distribution tools. Um, so it's really important um, to give yourself the ability to embrace those sort of things uh, very quickly. This last piece is a work in progress for us. So I'm excited to talk to all folks here about how you all are uh, developing your content APIs, uh, what sort of things you're doing for your uh, deployment um, and development um, um, infrastructure. You know, we're presently working with things like GraphQL uh, on the API end and React components on the front end and, and um, uh, Kubernetes and a lot of interesting uh, Google Cloud tools uh, at the infrastructure level. So I'd, I would really enjoy to hear your ideas. Um, and so the last point I would like to make about uh, innovation um, and a culture of innovation and creativity is this, and that is that innovation is local. You know, this is related uh, to being obsessed with the basics. Um, I think at uh, news organizations or media organizations, I guess all organizations, there's a temptation to overvalue the new and the revolutionary and to undervalue the incremental. I think that a, a lots of value can be brought to an organization uh, by implementing practices seeking out practices that are you know, new to your org rather than uh, searching for things that nobody else is doing. And I think to achieve uh, the kind of culture um, where this is possible, um, you should really celebrate uh, what I'll call local innovation. That is, you really poke around and find um, ideas uh, for improvement um, or a little uh, incremental improvements um, or creative ideas that your team has either from their own imagination or their own initiative or things they are bringing back from coming to an awesome conference like this and uh, embrace them, give people the time and space to implement them and then crucially celebrate um, those local uh, incremental innovations just as much as you do you know, a brand new revolutionary idea or a new product launch. This will have like a couple of good effects. One, you know, it'll do things to improve the day-to-day -day work of your teams, but also it'll, uh, it'll reward folks for um, caring uh, enough about their system um, and uh, doing uh, the work to seek out uh, ways to improve it and to make sure that you are not being entirely distracted by going off uh, and trying what's new, but really looking about how you can um, just do innovations that are local to your team. So to wrap up, to you know, the things that we've learned about uh, fostering a culture of creativity and, organization, uh, and innovation at Vice Media are, one, um, obsess over the basics, reduce hassle, make sure creativity does not evaporate uh, due to frustration. Um, that means like doing uh, you know, unexotic things like working on your workflow tools and be obsessing over those as much as, as you are excited about uh, new opportunities for storytelling. Two, uh, don't be afraid of structure and process and boundaries and putting those in place. I don't think that that will, that will uh, constrain creativity. I think it will foster it. Uh, guide rails for teams give, uh, and boundaries give something for teams to push against, and those are fantastic signals both to improve your tools and uh, to allow people to be imaginative about what they can do. And then my thir the third thing is to remember that innovation is local. You know, reward incremental improvements as much as you do um, novel ideas. Um, and um, those, are the, uh, those are our takeaways. Those are the things we've learned at Vice Media about cultivating creativity and innovation in, in a media org. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day.